Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna share with you a day in the life of a data analyst working in the UK fully remote. The goal here is just to give you a rough idea of my routine as a data analyst working fully remote so that it gives you an idea if it's something that interests you or something that you want to try or something that you don't want at all because you prefer being in the office and you prefer being around people. First, let me cover the advantages of working remotely. The advantages are clear and simple, is that I have the flexibility to work from whatever I want. I work from home, I work from coffee shops, I can go visit my family back in Morocco and still work from there. I don't have that limitation of being in an office. Also, I don't have to drive to work, I don't have to catch any buses or trains to go to work. And that's a massive advantage because you'll hear a lot of people in big cities they spend an hour, an hour and a half just in the metros or the buses or in the car. And that's a lot of time that can be saved to use for your health, to go to the gym and things like this. With all advantages come disadvantages as well. And the big one I would say with remote work is loneliness. You're always by yourself. It's just you doing the work. It's a lot of screens, a lot of computers. And if you don't have a good routine, you'll feel just drained sometimes and you feel like you want to see people, you want to do things with them. So that's why I understand a lot of people working in the office or hybrid because they still like that human touch. In my case, I currently work for a company based in Sweden, so I can't even go there. I'm in the UK. So for me, it's not really an issue. If we had an office close by, I will still go a few times per week. So yeah, a day in the life. First, I wake up in the morning around 6 a.m. and I do one hour of upskilling. And that's a routine that I've had for some time because I constantly learn new things. And if you wanna stay relevant in your field, you need to do the same. I don't mean you have to do it first thing in the morning. You can do it whenever, but just keep it consistent. These days, I'm learning techniques on machine learning engineer and ML ops, and that's my main focus. So I do that in the morning. I also do that at some point in the evening. After my first hour of upskilling, I spend a little bit of time on LinkedIn, usually half an hour. I post in there, I engage in there, and that's all before starting my working day at 8 a.m. So usually from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., that's where I start my work and I work on the most challenging coding tasks. So I have a lot of client projects, a lot of data analysis to do, a lot of reporting to do for them, and usually in the mornings, I will go and tackle the coding part and things that usually require my full focus. And in my case, I prefer to not do it from home. I have a better setup here, I have a big screen and everything, but I go to coffee shops to do it. So really quiet coffee shops, I have my nice coffee around, I can breathe some fresh air, I can have a little bit of people around me as well, I can have some background music or put them in my headphones. It just helps me focus in the morning because I can't go from bed to the living room and be productive, it's very difficult for me. I need that fresh air and I need that separation between being from home and being productive. So my mornings will be in the coffee shop. Also, if I have meetings, I usually try and take them from home because it's quieter and I have a better setup in here so I can speak to my team about progress, projects and all these things. We don't have set meetings, so whenever we have projects, whenever we have deadlines, changes, then meetings pop up but usually they don't just pop up on the same day. It's usually scheduled for other days, the next day or something like this. Then come back home, quick lunch. I usually cook at home. I prefer cooking myself. So I do something nice and quick for half an hour, 45 minutes. It helps me a little bit reset and rest because since 6 a.m. I'm on the screens. So my eyes are tired. So I use that 45 minutes to one hour to eat and rest a little bit. And then I go back to work from one to 4 p.m. roughly. So in the afternoon deep work session, I usually focus less on intense coding and I go more into documentation, refactoring some code, doing some reporting, making some dashboards, trying to improve the workflow and all the logic that I did in the mornings. But obviously it depends if the project is still ongoing and I still need to go and do some heavy coding, I will. But usually in the afternoons, I'm a little bit more tired than in the morning. I would say even more than a little bit. So I just decided to go for something a little bit lighter for my brain, which is still very important because I still have to do those tasks. I call them sometimes maintenance tasks, also looking at emails and doing things, but I don't spend hours looking at emails. I just hate that. I just do that at some points very quickly and I focus on delivering value because that's why I'm paid for. And that's a very important thing that many people should understand is that you're paid for the value you deliver and you're not paid for just sitting there and doing some fancy dashboards. That's just part of it. 
but is the overall value that you deliver to the business. Roughly around 4 p.m. I finish. So after I finish, usually I either go to the gym or I go and play tennis if the weather is nice. So that's like my time to just relax, unwind, maybe go out for a coffee shop with my partner, do something, not work, not related to screens because my eyes are completely tired. So for the next two, three hours, I just go and train, relax or do something for myself. After that, usually I can do one more hour of learning. Recently, I started a course on ML engineering and that's usually two hours that I do in the evenings, but I don't always have that. So it depends. But nowadays I add two more hours of upskilling because I really want to get to the next level in my journey. So it's worth for me to invest on it in terms of time, effort, focus, paying to be part of big cohorts and things like this. So one point that I wanted to mention about upskilling is that you heard me saying that I do one hour in the morning, a few hours in the evening. Sometimes I do all these, sometimes I do less. On weekends, sometimes I use my time to upskill. And we are in an age of AI and I believe if I just stay static and not upskill that potentially my job might be in danger, not just my job, but the whole field might be in danger. So I'm thinking more into data science, ML engineering, ML ops, AI engineering. You know, it's, there's like a curve, there's more difficulty obviously, but I do have a background in data science. And for me, that's why I put upskilling as a major piece of my routine. And I would advise anyone at the moment in any field to think of what's the next step? How can I upskill? How can I become more valuable? so that your jobs might never be affected by everything that's happening with AI. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's a day in the life of a data analyst working remotely from the UK. And I hope you enjoyed it. You learned a few things, maybe gave you some ideas or maybe showed you that you prefer being in the office. Leave all of this in the comment section. I would love to hear your experience as well, what you're encountering, what you're doing differently. And uh, I didn't specify too much the tools that I use and all those things because I thought this was a more light video. I don't want to bore you with what I use. That could be a video for another time. Just let me know if you want to hear something like that. And if you enjoyed it, leave it a like and subscribe to the channel. It does help me immensely grow on YouTube. And if you're a graduate or an intern, data scientist, data analyst, I've made a video where I share advice on the things I would do to get more opportunities and to start my journey. And I'll share it just here. You can go and give it a watch.